praise the Lord, saints. First, give me honor and glory to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We say hallelujah. Glory to his name. This morning we'll have opening scripture and prayer by Sister Samari Parker and Sister Cherish Rivia Snow. Excuse me if I mispronounce your name.
do our work. As I told them, we got to do our work now. I gave you a break. It's time to do work now. So how many know that God is in everything today? Regardless of what you're going through, God is in everything today. Whether you're going through a difficult circumstance, whether you're Yeah. 
associated with uh, First Baptist Church of Huntington Valley. But you already heard, you already heard just a little sound that we have a preacher in the house. Amen. And that is the Reverend Dr. Valerie D. Cook Farrell. Dr. Farrell, and I just mentioned her husband sitting here, is the Associate Minister for First Baptist Church of Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania, under the pastor of the Reverend Dr. Bruce Petty, Sr. Dr. Farrell is a recipient of a doctorate of ministry degree from Mission Seminary, a, a Master of Divinity and Counseling degree from the Biblical Theological Seminary at Hatfield, Pennsylvania, a Bachelor of Science degree in Biblical Studies and Organizational Leadership from Philadelphia Biblical University, an Associate degree in Accounting from Drexel University, an Associate degree in Advanced Technology from Temple University. Wow, I can go on. But she served also and this is what's important, is our service. You can announce all the degrees in the world, but her service in the capacities of a youth pastor, counselor, director of the youth Bible study, director of junior church, director of street evangelism, director of summer Bible school. She is currently serving as executive board of the Philadelphia Baptist Association Commission of Ministry. She's coordinator of the Suburban Baptist Association for their Southeastern Pennsylvania uh, Associate Ministers. She's a servant leader of women ministry, servant leader of two nursing home ministries, and serves as a chaplain program at Abington Jefferson Hospital. Dr. Farrell, along with her husband, are owners of Air Personalities of Praise on Highway 24 Gospel Internet Radio. Amen. Her passion for working and ministry with the youth has gained her accolades from numerous prestigious organizations such as Big Brothers and Sisters Association of Montgomery County, the City of Philadelphia, and the Montgomery County NOACP. She also served and featured in the Amber Gazette for Citizens of the Month. Dr. Farrell is an accomplished gospel soloist and has performed with gospel legends such as James Cleveland, Mercy, Mercer Ellington, son of Duke Ellington, performed background vocals and producers like Leon Huff and Kenny Gamble for Philadelphia International Recording Studios, recorded with Jeff Jacobs in the Philadelphia Praise Choir and the Dandridge Choir Choral Ensemble, and was featured in soloist on the Zion Tabernacle Choir CD.
name praise, the name that is above every name, the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, we thank you for the privilege to be able to come into your presence. We don't need to preach to intercede for us, God. Your word says we can come boldly before the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. For you said if we call upon you, you will hear our cry. And show us great yes, things. God, somebody needs a word today. Somebody's about to throw in the towel and give up. But God, you said your word will sustain us. Your word will strengthen us. Your word will keep us when we can't keep ourselves. So God, we need you to show up. We need you to show up and show out. We bind every spirit that's not of you. We come against every principality with the blood of Jesus. God, position your spiritual warfare angels around this sanctuary, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Satan. Deliver, heal, and set free. Do what you want to do. Any way you want to do it. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. God bless everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're viewing or lying or in the sanctuary. Meet every need. Heal every disease. Let your word go forth with power and conviction. Use your servant that when she opens her mouth, you speak through her. That you will be glorified, the people will be edified, and the devil will be horrified. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. We decree it into the atmosphere. Satan, you are already a defeated foe. You have no place in the kingdom of God. So God, we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah. 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 And amen. Amen. Can we just give God a hand praise? He's awesome. I don't know about you. I didn't come to play church.
God praise. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a good day to give God some praise. Not just because of who he is, but for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he is yet to do in our lives. How many know he gave you great mercy? Yeah. He does not deal with us as our nasty attitude. And I don't know about you, but I feel like David. I will bless the Lord all the time. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. And if you're glad about the Lord waking you up this morning, you can magnify the Lord with me. And we can all exalt his name together. Why? For the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. We bring you greetings, as our deacon has said, from the First Baptist Church of Huntington Valley, where Dr. Bruce Fetty Sr. is our pastor. And I thank and praise God for all of the officers and members of this branch of Zion, to Pastor West in his absence, and to my Boaz, Deacon Ori Farrell Jr. We give God praise. If you don't know, I tell God, thank you for my Boaz. If you don't know, who Boaz is, read your Bible. Every sister girl should have a Boaz. All I got to do is sing it and say I like it and it's at the door. I thank and praise God because he takes care of his wife and God takes care of his church. And I thank and praise God for that. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Let's give God praise for our young people. For our ushers, for our choir, because they don't have to be in the house. And now let's give God praise for their supervisors, those who sacrifice time to work with our children. And give God praise for our musicians over here. Thank you to God for the glory. We, this is an anointed team right here. And I heard that music, I said, oh, we're going to have a good time. And, hey! Amen. To God be the glory. I'm coming from a very familiar portion of scripture. If you would turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, I'm going to read a couple of verses. And when you have it, if you could stand in honor of the Lord's word. When he read the word in the temple, he stood. When you have it, say amen. Second Chronicles 20, the 12th verse. Thus beginneth the reading of God's holy and inerrant word. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and their children and their little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, and the Levi, a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord has to say to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight. You will 
with me. That is the reading of God's holy and every word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the time that is ours to share together this morning, I would like to talk about how to become victorious in life's battles. The book of 2 Chronicles is a sequel to 1 Chronicles and a supplement of 1 and 2 Kings. This book opens with the ascension of Solomon to David's throne and his ascension to glory and wisdom. The only mention in this book to the northern kingdom is a division of the United Kingdom and its first king, Jeroboam. The rest of the book contains a narrative of the kings of the southern kingdom of Judah who reigned in succession until the Babylonian captivity. And it concludes with an intimation of Cyrus's decree for the restoration of the Jews and the rebuilding of the temple. It is in this 20th chapter that we find King Jehoshaphat, who was about to go into battle against a very deadly military force called the Ammonites. Though King Jehoshaphat had a very well-trained military force himself, when he got the news of the upcoming invasion upon his land, he became very fearful. Him being a man of faith, called a fast, and sought the Lord on what to do in this dire upcoming battle. Yeah. Now there are some lessons that we can learn from King Jehoshaphat. In verse 1 to 3, we find that he feared the enemy which is natural of all of us. All right. In verse 3b, he sought the Lord, and this should be our first response. Verse 3c, he proclaimed a fast. <coughs> the Bible says some things come only by fasting and praying. In verse 4 to 12, he led his people in prayer. How many know that the prayers of the righteous are failing much? In 12a, he confessed his weakness and admitted his inability to cope with the situation. You can't solve all your problems. In 12b, he looked to the Lord. He didn't look to his friends. He didn't call his best friend up. He didn't cuss nobody out. But he looked to the Lord. Verses 14 to 15, he was encouraged by God. Verses 15b, the Lord informed him that the battle was the Lord and not his. In verses 17, he was instructed when to stand still and when to move. If the battle is the Lord's, we must obey the orders and not move on our own. He worshiped the Lord in verse 18. In verses 19 to 21, he praised the Lord. And it is in verse 20, he believed God for the victory before even going out to meet the enemy. His faith moved his feet. The enemy defeated themselves in verses 22, 24. When we let God fight our battles, yeah. the enemy is a defeated foe. Yeah. In verses 25 to 30, God's victory brings blessings. And in verses 26 to 29, he thanked God and blessed him for the victory. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning us who are in Christ Jesus, not because of, but while you're in it, yeah. while they're getting on your last nerve, give God thanks. Yeah. While the bills are overdue and no money in the bank, give God thanks. Because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. How do we become victorious in life's battle? Most people have the mindset that once they gave their life to Christ, 
life will be a bed of roses. However, that's not what the Bible says in Psalms 34, 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That means you're going to have some good days, and you're going to have some not so good days. That means you will have family drama. You won't be acquainted with the backstabbers. You know the ones that smile on your face? All the time they want to take your place. How many know that fools stab people in the back, but the wise cut the cord and freed themselves from the fool? You will soon discover that everyone who smiles in your face is not your friend. Yes, you will have to deal with the politics on the job, the politics in the church. You know those ones that think that they've been saved since birth, never did no wrong, that they're always right and everybody else is wrong. This is my church, this is my kitchen. This, I'm, I'm the president of the ushers and talk to people like they don't. You, 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 you know the politics, the church politics. You might not be able to change the people around you, but you sure can change the people that you choose to be around. Sometimes you might have to say, don't push me, because I'm close to that. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's just a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how. Many of us think 
that it's the person who backstabbed us or who hurt us. But many times the problem, the enemy may be our own mind and how we respond to the situation. How many know your mind will always believe everything that you tell it? The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're going to lose, if you think you're not going to get that job, you've already lost the battle. But my Bible says, I can decree a thing. I can have what I say I can have. My Bible says, if I ask, I shall receive. If I knock, the door will be answered. If I can, it's not in the Christian's vocabulary. Because we can do all things. He said, if I delight myself in him, he will give me the desires of my heart. He said, if I obey his commands, he said, I've got generational blessings. A reason why all these kids are blessed is because of your prayers. You're blessed because of your mama's prayers. Your mama's blessed because of her mama's prayers. We're all living on somebody's faith, somebody's prayers. Is he already saying? The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know that a person is not declared dead until their brain dead? Because your brain controls everything in the body. If you stick your hand in on a hot stove, your hand does not know what's burning until your brain says, hey, that's hot. And then you snatch your hand back. And then you say, oh, my hand is burnt. Why do you think mothers tell their children, Oh, that's not that bad. It'll be okay. Because we're trying to let them know that just because you scratch yourself, you're not going to be in the wheelchair. Because somebody told you you're nothing. God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop hanging around negative thinking people. Stop hanging around people who don't pray. If you don't pray, you don't have no power. No prayer, no power. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now, unto him. 
But the Bible says if you call on me, I will hear your prayer. Show you great and mighty things. We stood on the word of God that says the prayers of the righteous avail much. We stood on his word that said my word shall not return unto me more, but it shall accomplish what I sent it to do. And I'm glad to report to you today that our daughter has been cancer free for two years this November. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say it! He said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. When we see a big problem, like sickness, family drop, financial problems, it's natural to get concerned about what's going to happen. However, it's when we give up and say what's the use when we get angry that we're showing signs of defeat. The Bible says if God be for you, it's more than those against you. The Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You see, God responds to our faith. It doesn't take great faith. He said if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. He didn't say climb the mountain, but he said speak to the mountain. And I come to speak to somebody. Whatever you're going through, whatever mountain is in your way, in the name of Jesus,
trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last our way. He didn't say you wouldn't cry. But he said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming. I come to tell somebody your joy is coming. It might be midnight, but your joy is coming. It might be nighttime, but your joy is coming. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world sure enough can't take it away. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just can't keep it to myself. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my feet get light. And I start to think about David and dancing like David did. I call it the two step. Yeah. 
old enough to know better. God sent me here to tell you, every time you pass a church and you see a cross, some, somebody gave their life. <coughs> this cross bridges the gap between God and man. When they say, how much do you love them? He stressed it all. He didn't have to die for you. The word says, while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for us. And every time I think of it, when I was doing my own thing, in the church, but not delivering, to one day, God didn't call me Cookie. He said, Valerie, you going to stop embarrassing me. You either going to serve me or I'm going to take you out of here. <coughs> and I heard him just as clear as day. And I don't mind being transparent. Because y'all need to know, preachers, the Lord had to bring us from somewhere. <laughs> we weren't born with the word in our mouth. Deacons might have their suits on, but they didn't always have one suit. He left the 99 for the one. I was the one. I didn't care what nobody else thought when I came down the aisle. Because I knew I needed a savior. I knew that he kept me in an accident when I wasn't living right. Are you one of the ones? If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, listen, everybody's got a bomb. And the way these politicians are acting now, it's like a circus. Everybody wants to be powerful. But check the last book in the Bible. Everything that's happening now has already been foretold. Jesus said, you're not going to know when, but I'm going I'm to give you the sign. I'm going to give you the sign that I'm on my way. My brothers and my sisters, all the signs are here. All the signs are here. Earth, wind, and fires used to say, keep your head to the sky for the clouds to tell you why. When he comes back, everybody's going to see him. But will you be caught up to meet him? in the air. This is serious. This is why I preach. To bring people to repentance. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you need to raise your hand right now. Because your blood will not be on my hands. Everybody say it. My second plea. If your relationship with God is not on point. And you know it. You know you're not right with God. And you want to renew your fellowship. Lord, I know I've got some things in my life. I know I've, I've wandered away. And some of the folks in church made me mad. And I didn't like what was said. I didn't like what they done. They want to cruise. They not think about you. But Jesus said, I haven't left you. Why are you mad at me? I walk beside you. When you're going down those dangerous nights, I'm with you in the car when that accident was right on the other side of the road. I was with you. You may have left me, but I didn't leave you. If you want to renew your relationship with God, I need you to come down this aisle right now so we can pray for you. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you, who's standing next to you. If your relationship's not right, I need you to come down this aisle. If your relationship's not right, I need you to come down this aisle right now. Tomorrow's not promised. If you don't, many people have died sitting in the pew. If your relationship is not right, come down this aisle right now. See, we play in church. God is calling for a church to be the church. 
people out there are dying and are not coming in because we're not living the life that we're talking about. You're walking around with a Bible in your hand and cussing like a sailor. God is not pleased. If you, this is my last plea. If your life is not right, you need to come down here. Nobody has a heaven and a hell. Come on, baby. A heaven and a hell to put you in. God did not send me here to Shalom to play. Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. That's what God wants. Come on. Come on. That's what we're trying to get right with God. The song says, get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross where he shed his blood. Get right. Get right with God. Is there another? Come on. Our Father and our strong God. Your word says that we confess our sins. You're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father God, we stand before you as empty vessels before a full picture. God, we realize that we have done some things against your will. But as we come to you, God, forgive us for any sins by omission, commission thought, word, or deed, creating us a right spirit, a clean heart, oh God, so that we can serve you. Thank you, God, for the blood that covers our sins. Thank you, God, for accepting our confession, realize that we have not been walking right. God, I pray that you put your blood over these individuals. God, bless them, forgive them, and walk with them, God. Put your ministering angels around them. Bless their families, God. Give them a new heart, a new mind, so that they can serve you. And we thank you for the blood covering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. You may go back to your seat. To God be the glory. Now, my last plea, my last plea, if there's anyone here that does not have a church home and you would like to become a part of the Siloam Baptist Church, won't you come now? If you want to join this branch of Zion, won't you come? Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to the deacons. We want to thank you, Reverend Dr. Farrell, for that powerful message. Thank you, Dr. Farrell. Fresh vegetables. We have cauliflower, 
We have great tomatoes. We have carrots. We also have celery. Go downstairs, help yourself. There you have bags to put them in. So go downstairs and build yourselves of this, okay? And now if you will stand for the benediction.